sorry to ask. <laughs>
Thank you. Espíritu, 
así no se dejarán arrastrar por el desorden egoísta del hombre. Este desorden está en contra del Espíritu de Dios, y el Espíritu está en contra de ese desorden. Y esta oposición es tan radical que les impide a ustedes hacer lo que querían hacer. Pero si lo guía el Espíritu, ya no están ustedes bajo el dominio de la ley. Palabra de Dios. For Jesus's being taken up or fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him, because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven? To consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens, and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But, he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him Jesus said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Jubilee, everyone. Happy Jubilee. Perhaps you have heard the fable about the pig and the chicken walking along a highway when they see a billboard depicting a large plate of bacon and eggs with two pieces of toast alongside the perfect and healthy breakfast. When the chicken says to the pig, isn't it wonderful that we can help so much in providing healthy meals for humans? The pig quickly responds, well, that seems easy for you to say. After all, yours is just a contribution. Mine is total commitment. <laughs> All of the readings today speak to us about call, which not only involves a willingness to make a contribution to God's mission, but also requires an everyday response of genuine commitment that is deepened over a lifetime. In our first reading, Elijah calls to Elisha to be not only his disciple in the work of prophet, but also eventually his successor and to be one of Israel's greatest prophets. Elijah throws his mantle over Elisha to symbolize God's choice of him as the new prophet. And Elisha is gifted with Elijah's authority and powers of miracles. Despite the obvious urgency of his call, Elisha pauses, offering an excuse to not respond so hastily, wishing to kiss his family and his friends and his previous life goodbye, and possibly cancel his credit cards and pack a change of clothing. Then, with laser-like focus, Elisha comes to an awareness that the voice of God rumbles like thunder within his very spirit. And in his life, now, will be upside down and inside out. He hastily responds by leaving his former ways, willingly trusting 
in his new life as the voice and heart of God's mission, boldly proclaiming God's reign. This sacred call is an invitation that will require Elisha to claim his courage and wisdom, contributing everything as disciple and committing wholeheartedly to God's reign while being wrapped in the mantle of mission. Our Gospel today is from Luke, beginning with this section called The Journey to Jerusalem. For Luke, Jerusalem is the focal point of Jesus' life. It is there that the disciples will one day form a new community to continue the work of Jesus, and it is from there that it will spread to every corner of the world. <coughs> Jesus, faithful to God's mission, moves forward with his small company of disciples on the long, dusty road of Galilee to Jerusalem. It will not be just another journey. He is on the march, and he will not be turned back, setting his face toward the holy city. While passing through Samaria, where centuries-old conflicts continually incite mutual retribution, Jesus rebukes his disciples for their need to seek revenge upon the Samaritans. He desires no part of violence or hostility, warning them not to respond with aggression or to seek vengeance against those who reject them or oppose them. This is yet another mini-lesson in Discipleship 101, preparing them for their future mission. In the next part of the story, Jesus encounters three potential disciples who ask to join him, and he puts forth rigorous consequences for those seeking to join him in mission. His first response stresses mobility, a radical discipleship, no shelter or home. The second is to be urgently immediate, moving forward to care for those beyond one's family. And the third is to resolutely look forward, relentlessly proclaiming the reign of God. For us, this may sound like a not-so-nice Jesus, fierce perhaps, startling us with his intensity and harshness. But Jesus uses this occasion to speak about the true nature of discipleship and the implications of following him. An eager contribution is not enough. He demands a radical commitment a radical love, and a life of service, sharing in the mission of God with the possibility of suffering for the faith. Not an easy lesson to learn for the disciples of times past or for ourselves as 21st century disciples. Therefore, in the words of Daniel Berrigan, priest, poet, and peace activist who died this past April. We must envision and speak of the call to discipleship in this way. And I quote, If you are going to follow Jesus, you better look good on wood. So what is the good news for us as we ponder God's word today? God's calls are purpose, passion, and choice all went into one. Somewhat clarifying, yet terrifying. Taking us beyond the confines of what we thought we knew to regions of the unknown and high risk. Much like Alicia and the three enthusiastic visitors who requested to follow Jesus, we are quick to establish timelines, 
agendas, plans, and excuses. We truly desire to contribute to God's mission, but the call demands a growing into a deepening commitment, which may provide us an opportunity to look good on wood. Every Christian is called during his or her lifetime, each in a different and particular way, again and again. It is a lifelong conversation with God as we continue to encounter subtle or glaringly obvious hints to recognize the guidance to become what we are meant to be or to do what we are meant to do. It is only gradually that we glimpse what God imagines our life might become, ever challenging our insights, abilities, hopes, and gifts. We are all called to become the best version of ourselves, empowered, sent forth, wrapped in the mantle of mission, proclaiming God's compassion, forgiveness, mercy, and redeeming love. For we must go wherever there is need, encounter whoever is in need, and do whatever it takes to bring the good news of redemption and hope so as to reawaken and restore meaning and purpose in people's lives. Today, we have come to honor and celebrate those who fix their hearts on answering God's call. 25, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 75 years ago as foul religious in our congregation. Their lives are wrapped in the mission mantle, having accepted the call to live lives of service, lives of purpose and meaning in health care, education, community service, social services, parish ministry, social justice, wellness services, and as spiritual directors, and through the ministry of prayer, just to name a few. We also have come to recognize and celebrate those who fix their hearts on answering God's call 15, 25, and 40 years ago as associates by embracing the mission, charism, and spirit of the Sisters of St. Agnes. These are women and men from a variety of Christian faith traditions, empowered by the principles and values of the gospel and the mission and the vision of the congregation. They commit to live out their unique role as public witnesses of their call as partners in mission. So, in an age of renewed awareness of the suffering of innocent people through human trafficking, exploitation of third world countries, or the tragic systematic death of peoples by means of torture, famine, or genocide, we can be sure that disciples wrapped in mission will tirelessly fight to alleviate the suffering of humankind. In an age of clash between human dignity for all and the restrictive power of a few, we can be sure that disciples wrapped in mission will name injustice and call it social sin. In an age when Christians are confronted to choose between life and death for the sake of the gospel, we can be sure that disciples wrapped in mission will be there with a holy resiliency, boldly standing in the mess 
and muck of it all, choosing life and willing to stare death in the face for the sake of God's reign. When discrimination, elitism, or oppression operates in society, governments, or churches, we can be sure that disciples wrapped in mission will be there to proclaim the reign of God, to be voice and heart, call and sign of the God whose design for this world is justice, mercy, peace, and love for us all. Finally, I suppose we need to ask, what happened to the chicken and the pig? Well, I believe that they have become our teachers, showing us that we all are called to be disciples of good newsing, to be team players promoting social causes that benefit the least, the last, and the lost, to be catalysts for change as we ponder the bewildered state of affairs in our world, to be bold and strong of heart, meeting the challenges of our weary world, and to be wrapped in the mantle of mission. Thus we learn from them that our purpose, neither opaque or transparent, now becomes a dazzling light in which we unmistakably sense God's thunder within us as we continue to live out God's mission and respond wholeheartedly to the call of the God who loves us unconditionally, compassionately, always, and forever. As Sisters of St. Agnes, we have experienced the divine gift of a personal call to deepen our baptismal commitment by a public consecration of our lives to God. We undertake public vows to live the evangelical counsels of celibate chastity, poverty, and obedience in the congregation of St. Agnes. Our pastoral concern for those, for all those whose faith, life, or human dignity is threatened leads us to minister among God's people wherever the need may take us. Walsh, Sister Mary Jane Wilberforth, 
Sister Michaela O'Brien, and Sister Rebecca Edwards. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Celebrating 60 years. Please stand if you're able when I call your name. Sister Barbara Jean Rossmore. Sister Viada Rising. Sister Julaine Meyer. Sister Mary Martin Bowlby. Sister Mary Louise Fonensteel. Sister Paula Shaw, Sister Renee Parker. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Celebrating 50 years. Please stand as I call your name. Sisters Ann Kernan, Bridget Layden, Donna Ennis, Jean Hinder, Jeremy Quinn, Joanita Stelter, David Schilling, and Sharon Palmer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I, Sister Jenner, vow to live the remaining years of my life in the cell of the chastity, poverty, and obedience in the congregation of St. Agnes. Amen. Sisters, I accept your vows in the name of the Church, and I am confident that your love will be rich as God continues to do great things in you. <coughs> Sister celebrating 40 years. Can I call your name? Please stand. Sister Julie Ann Crawford. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I, Sister Julie Ann, to live the remaining years of my life in celibate chastity, poverty, and obedience in the congregation of St. Amen. Amen. I accept your love in the name of the church, and I am confident that your life will be rich as God continues to do great things in you. Hermana Francis Sanchez, por favor. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Yo, hermana Francis Sánchez Méndez, hago voto de castidad y celibato, pobreza y obediencia en la congregación de las hermanas de Santa Inés. Amén. Amén. Hermano, yo acepto sus votos en el nombre de la iglesia. Y tengo confianza en que su vida será una gracia como Dios sigue haciendo grandes cosas en usted. I ask the jubilarians to stand and call your name. Forty years, Vivian Caroline. Thank you. 
five years. Our staff, Jan Parker, Madeline Ramble, Sybil Keen, and Rosemary Justin. Fifteen years, Eileen Harden, Karen Kuhlberger, and Ron Tom. gives us the grace to persevere in our commitments. Let us pray for these associates who are resolved to renew their commitments today in the presence of the church. I commit myself to continue to deepen my relationship with God. I want to respond more fully to my physical call and to respond to God's call as an associate of the congregation of the Sisters of St. Agnes. I accept your commitment to the associate relationship with the Sisters of St. Agnes, and I am confident that your lives will be rich as God continues to break, do great things in you.
expressions of faith. For the peoples of the world, displaced from their homelands due to war, poverty, or natural disasters, for peace in all lands and in all hearts, for all who are celebrating their jubilee, in gratitude for them and for the service they have given to God's people, for many more blessings upon their lives. For our parents and families, both living and deceased, for all who have supported us in our vocations, for all sisters of St. Agnes, associates, partners in ministry, all friends and benefactors, for the Spirit's guidance as we all strive to carry out the mission of Christ. For all who are sick or near death, for the jubilarians who have died and are celebrating this day in the fullness of God's presence. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for men with evil. 
Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory of your Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Thank you. 